Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's learn about Safari's autofill feature. So the autofill feature in Safari is what fills in forms on web pages automatically based on how you've previously entered data. So for instance, when you go to a page and you see your email address, your name automatically filled into a form, that's Safari using autofill. So you control this in Safari by going to Safari Preferences and then looking at the autofill tab. There are three different categories. There's the stuff from your address book card. So your name, your email address, phone number, information like that can be used to fill in web forms. Also you've got a specific list of username and passwords and you have information from other forms. So here's an example. I'm at a form on the Apple website and I can see here that I've got some fields that could use autofill. My name and email address. Now as soon as I start typing my name it will automatically fill in the rest of it. It recognizes that I'm typing something that's already there. In addition I could simply have just hit the down arrow and it will give me the possibilities based on the information in autofill. Likewise I could also have chosen edit autofill form or shift command A and it will find all the fields on the page that it thinks it can fill in and it will fill those in, in this case, two different fields. So why does it only work sometimes? Sometimes you're at a web page, it asks for an email address and the information isn't automatically filled in. Well the reason for this is because every field on a form has a name or ID. For instance an email field may be called email and autofill knows that if a field is called email it should try to put your email address in there. However the programmer who created that page may not have called that field email. They may call it email1 or give it some sort of cryptic name and in that case Autofill doesn't know it's supposed to contain your email address. You might know it because of the label and the way the page is laid out but Autofill can't tell. Here's another example of Autofill at work. I go to sign in to Yahoo here and you can see it automatically has filled in my ID and my password and the password's hidden there. And the first time I went to fill this in, I filled it in and it asked me whether I wanted to save this information as the ID and password for autofill to use. Now if I go back to the preferences here and I take a look at what's under the edit button for username and passwords, I can see that there it's got login.yahoo.com, it's got my username there, and if I want I could remove that, basically resetting the autofill for that page. Likewise, I can look under other forms and I can see that there's some other web pages here. For instance, the Weather Underground page here is one of the entries. And if I go to that page, I can see right at the top it's going to ask for my zip code. And sure enough, if I were to use Edit Autofill Form, you can see it fills in that information. So that's the information it was storing under other forms. Now you may be thinking, is it really secure for important passwords to be stored in Safari's autofill? Well, you're right, it isn't, and that's why they're not stored there. Passwords are not actually stored as part of autofill, they're stored as part of your keychain. So when you run keychain here, you can see that there's various keychains on the left. The first one usually is your login keychain. That's information you have available once you've entered your password and logged into your account. And under there, there's different categories. Passwords is one of them. If you look in there, you'll find different passwords stored, including the ones that you've stored for pages for autofill. So here's the Yahoo one, for instance, and I can double click on that and it brings it up and it shows me the information here and I can even click here and enter my password to see the password that's stored. So this is where it's really stored and encrypted and you only have access to these passwords if you're logged into your account. Now you can further restrict access to a password and autofill using the keychain. Go to access control for one of these and you can see that Safari is set to always have access to this. You can simply remove Safari from that list and then it will have to obey this rule up here which says confirm before allowing access. So here you can see I've done that. I've removed Safari from this list here. I've made sure it says confirm before allowing access and also ask for keychain password. Now when I go to Yahoo and go to sign in, it'll come up and say that Safari wants to use this password here. I have to enter my keychain password, click allow, and it will enter it in. So it's a little extra layer of security. If I had said always allow, then it would change that preference and you wouldn't have to enter the password the next time you did this in Safari. Now a better solution if you're concerned about password security is to use a program like 1Password which allows you to manage your passwords and store them in a little more secure way. 
So I hope you like this look at using autofill in Safari. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page, and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.